Hey houseplant friends, I just wanted to let you know I'm putting this at the front of the video today because I put it at the end of yesterday's video. I now have affiliate links and a Patreon. So if you're like, oh my gosh, how can I support Ashley because I like her content a lot. I think it's crazy that any of you watch my videos and that any of you like it here. But I have a Patreon for those of you who want to support me. I opened it four hours ago and we have seven patrons at the moment. Thank you so much to my Patreons, Abby Miller, Anna Davidson, Caitlin Holmes, Christopher Savory, Cody Fondren, Karen Rochelle, and Plant with Casey. Anyways, so I have a Patreon now. So it will be the first link in my videos from now on. If you. Seven uh, yeah, I have seven patrons. Isn't that crazy? We've only been up and running for about three hours as of recording this, and those are the patrons for today's video. If you subscribed and you're not on today's video, it's because I filmed after you subscribed, you'll be on tomorrow's video. This is not something you have to do. You are still a real one. Even if you are not supporting me on Patreon, it is not a requirement to be a real one. Everyone who's subscribed to my channel is a real one. That's just one of the names that I gave one of these categories, but it will help me be able to do this full time a lot faster. Faster. That being said, I do feel embarrassed <laughs> having a Patreon with only like 7,600 subscribers, but um, I just, I want to do this full time so bad and every little bit of support that you guys can give helps. So that's my Patreon. I hope that you guys aren't offended that I have a Patreon. You do not have to give me your money. I appreciate it a lot. You don't have to do it, but if you want to, the option is there, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Today's video is going to be my personal top 10 favorite houseplants that I know for a fact do really good in low light conditions. That is because I either owned them very recently and they only just now either kicked the dust or during the move I had to give them away, or they're plants that I own now. So with that being said, let's jump into my very personal favorite houseplant for low light conditions. This is the Ludisa Discolor Jewel Orchid. This is an amazing houseplant. I grow this plant very, very far away from a window. It is actually nowhere near a window. It's on my dresser in my bedroom, which gets the lowest light in the house. This plant is always putting out new leaves. It doesn't get any humidity. It's in this massive pot mug thing I got from World Market because, I mean, look at that. That is so cute. How do you not personally identify identify with this vase <laughs> and it put out a second child right there and it's always putting out new leaves it's killing it honestly and it's so pretty it's not just like a regular freaking plant like a Diffenbachia or something and not to like hate on Diffenbachia except that I really I don't like Diffenbachia I don't like Diffenbachia it's just a, it's a beautiful plant it's an unusual plant that you wouldn't think would do well in low light conditions but it just does and it's killing it so this is my favorite low light house plant is it is a little bit more on the expensive side. I think I paid for a whole six inch pot like $35 but there was a bunch of different plants in there and I gave them away to different people that I liked. So yeah it's putting out new growth all the time. It is definitely tall. I don't know if they're supposed to be this like leggy but I don't care. I think it's beautiful. The next low light house plant on this list is the Raven ZZ or regular old green ZZ. Here is one of my ZZ. This plant is a plant I'm going to be giving away here soon within the next week. It is the Costa Farms Raven ZZ that I personally bought this is not the one that was shipped to me. I'm going to be giving this guy away. So follow me on Instagram at plantmeashley for an international, international, international giveaway that is going to be happening probably at the start of next week. But I'm not sure when it starts. So follow me on Instagram. I'll tell you when it starts over there. Go check it out. But yes, this is the Raven ZZ. This plant does amazing in low light conditions, especially the regular green form ZZ. I keep my green one on my kitchen counter in the kitchen where there is no light and it's freaking killing it. Is it great low light house plant? Yes. And this is a common plant. Well, not the Raven one, the regular one. This is a common plant that everyone thinks of for a plant that likes low light conditions. So I personally prefer the black version over the green version, but you do you. The black version will probably grow uh, slower in lower, lower light conditions just because it does need more green to photosynthesize, but. And I feel like I should clarify, when I'm saying low light, that doesn't mean no light. It means that it's very low ambient light and the area will never receive direct light. And in fact, it might even be a little shady. So the next plant is a plant that I owned 
and ended up giving away when I moved to my new apartment, which is Calathea Ornata. This is one of the only Calathea, being one of two, that I have never killed that has been able to survive in any lighting condition and it honestly just freaking thrives. It loves life, it doesn't crisp on you, you can water it, you cannot water it, it just does its thing. It's one of my favorite houseplants. I actually bought my future mother-in-law one and hers is still killing it at her house and it's pink. It's got freaking pink on it. Who doesn't like a little bit of pink on their houseplant. Clathea Ornata, amazing plant. Little bit of a higher price point. I believe they sell for like $25. Hopefully you're getting a bigger one for that size. The fourth plant on this list is one of my favorite Calathea, probably my very favorite Calathea, Calathea macnoia. I used to say macoyana. It actually might be macoyana. I'm not sure. It'll say on the bottom of the screen which one is right. It is amazing. This plant acts exactly like Calathea ornata. Does not crisp. You can give it water, you can kind of let it dry out, you can let it do its thing. I personally am on the side of I let my plants dry out a lot in between waterings. I need a Calathea that kind of follow my own personal watering habits and this is my favorite. I also think it's the most beautiful Calathea out there. The little lines over everything and like there's these beautiful dots and these streaks and it's just perfect because some people think the Calathea mosaica is the most pretty Calathea out there but I actually disagree because I think that the Calathea macuyana has the exact same like very distinct lines on it but then there's more than just that which what it would just why it literally is so beautiful so love this plant does amazing in low light conditions phenomenal 10 out of 10 would recommend next plant the next plant on this list plant number five is philodendron jungle boogie and i'm gonna put my mic down to show you my own personal plant real quick this is my philodendron oh jungle boogie i almost forgot my mic <laughs> Philodendron jungle boogie is an amazing house plant. It is the only philodendron I have that honest to God does not mind being in the darkest spot on my house because even though we have these windows here and we get this beautiful, beautiful light coming in here, there's nothing here. It's a dark, shady quarter on the bottom of a shelf. Gets no light, no attention, no love. Well, it gets love from me and Newt, the magic water. It just freaking sits here and it grows. It's actually putting out a new growth point on one of the on one of the leaves and it's putting out a new leaf at this very second. Philodendron Jungle Boogie, 10 out of 10. Either way you swing it, I mean, my ring of fire over there is doing just great. Yep, Jungle Boogie. The sixth plant on this list is Ivy. I would show you mine right now, but I forgot to water it when I did the watering video the other day, and it's droopy as heck. But my little Ivy is over there in the corner. It is about to get watered. I'm not gonna lie and say I just watered it. It's about to get watered. It sits in the shade, and it's grown five new leaves since I've had it. No light, no direct light ever, except for maybe some light from a lamp but it's not a grow light so but yeah amazing plant i love it any kind of ivy is going to grow exceptionally well in the shade that is because ivy grow up trees they're used to usually never getting direct sun always kind of growing on the ground in the undergrowth not really getting a lot of light put them anywhere in your house they're gonna be fine they love it they heckin love every everything so ivy the seventh plant on this list is Okay, try not to poke my eye out. Sansevieria Bantel Sensation. This is a plant I got from when I was working at the greenhouse. You know, it's doing amazing. It's got three stalks that are putting out babies. And then we have this whole, this whole separate stalk right there that is doing its own thing. And that's been coming out for a while, so. Yeah, this plant is killing it. It is the only Sansevieria that I like because it's basically just it's basically just white. It's really, really nice. Sansevieria are one of the only plants besides ivy that can be variegated and also do well in the shade. And that's because they're such thick stalks. It's not gonna crust and like rot brown and melt because it's gonna live its cute little heckin' life and be an amazing plant and be on the ground and reach up for the sun. I actually really like this one. I think if I saw a Bantel Sensation out in the wild too, I would buy it. Mostly because I've never seen a Bantel Sensation for sale before anywhere. So I think I would definitely freak out and have a, have a whole spaz attack about it, but that's just me, so. The eighth plant on this list is regular green 
pothos or pothos, however you want to say it. Green pothos is exceptionally good for a houseplant because it's just, it's hardier, greener leaves. Whereas philodendron have thinner leaves that are kind of easier to tear. Pothos have very almost like rigid or thicker leaves. I wouldn't recommend any kind of variegated pothos for you uh, to put in the shade or a uh, low light area unless it's an aurea and it has the yellow yellow has a very hard time like melting and falling off because there's still tints of green in it any kind of snow queen marble queen anything like that do not put it in a shady spot i've lost many a snow queen pothos to you know putting it somewhere where it just isn't getting enough light yeah but right now i have actually i don't think i own any pothos yeah, I don't think I own any pothos, but I used to. I had a bunch of them. When I first started getting into it, I did have a r plain jade pothos. That was my favorite. That plant grew faster than any plant I've ever had. So 10 out of 10 would recommend jade pothos to you to put in a low light area. The ninth plant for our list is, this is a staghorn fern. This thing is incredibly beautiful. I absolutely love it. I cannot believe I never got one before because it's just so happy. You guys just get this feeling in your heart when you see a house plant that you love. And it's just like, yes that's how this how that's how it is for me with this plant it's just like you look at this plant and you just get this wholesome feeling not only that it does really well in shady conditions especially in my house it sits about oh i don't know six feet away from a west facing window so yeah it does really good loves it doesn't ever get any kind of direct or indirect bright light it's always just kind of chilling and relaxing yeah staghorn fern and finally, the 10th plant on this list is green philodendron heteracium. I keep saying freaking hedricatum in my videos and it's not. It's heteracium or hartley philodendron or philodendron scandens. Any of those work really well. Not hedricatum, heteracium. The Brazil, which I have over here, I don't know if you can see it. This is a variegated version of the Heteraceum. It has yellow on it. And the Rio, which I also have somewhere, oh, it's up here. You can't see it, but I have the Philodendron Rio too, which is up there, and that has white, and that is a hybrid. It's got longer leaves, so I don't think that that's just a Heteraceum, but the Brazil is. So I would definitely recommend a Heteraceum for your lower light areas. Philodendron do get leggy when they have low light conditions, so you'll just have to keep that in mind. But if you slap a little kiki paste on there or get multiple plants, and pot them all in a pot, you should be totally fine. The plants will do great. Yeah, those are my top, my personal top 10 favorite house plants. Those are not just randomized recommendations. Now I'm going to name a couple plants that I have killed because I had them in low light conditions so that you can know, absolutely know, these plants do not belong in low light conditions. Hoya Crimson Queen, Hoya Crimson Princess, Marble Queen Pothos, Snow Queen Pothos, Most Anthurium. I haven't killed any Anthurium yet, but anthurium get extremely long like they get the longest petiole in the world if you put them in a shady spot so if you want to keep your anthurium manageable don't give them low light give them brighter indirect light or medium medium bright light but just hoya seem to just not work unless you have really nice brighter light at least for me so i guess that's just something to keep in mind but anyways thank you so much for watching this houseplant video please check out my patreon just go just go check out the page just give it a look i put a lot of work into it i want people to look at it and be proud if you want to donate a dollar or three or five a month that would be super cool if not totally understand you are still real ones i need to i need to emphasize this you are still a real one even if you don't donate money as long as you're subscribed you're a real one that being said check out my patreon look out look at the affiliate links if there's anything you need you feel like supporting the channel i'd love to have your support if not thanks for being a real one anyways and just be subscribed to the channel thank you so much for watching this video please make sure you leave a like please subscribe please tweet me at plant me ashley let me know if there are any videos you want to see anything in specific all of the end of this month are going to be Portland houseplant tours. I know, I know, get excited. And then I'm going to film enough tours so that every other day for the first half of April, you are getting phenomenal tours of Portland stores that you haven't seen before because I haven't seen any houseplant YouTubers from Portland yet do tours of these places, so. Except for me, except for some stuff on my channel, so. 
yeah, get excited for that. I have a collab coming out on April 1st, so get excited for the collab. If you liked this video, consider staying, watching some more. I'll recommend two for you at the end of this video, and I will see you guys in the next houseplant video. Oh, and send me mail. Please send me mail. I'd love to have a really nice and big March mail opening for March 31st. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next houseplant video. Bye.